Hey, I'm gonna show you how I got this cool springy delayed animation, this nice secondary catch-up animation on this flashlight following this first person camera. I'll also show you this basket carrying a ball where it's kind of bouncing along with it. I'll show you this pendulum swinging and this fun little snowman animation. So all of this was created with a very simple extension in Blender called Spring Arm. It only takes one or two clicks to set up. Basically, it's for springy secondary animation that follows follows a parent object. So in this case, I have a flashlight that's following this first person animation. The old way of doing this, right, is you would take this flashlight, let's copy the rotation, copy the ro uh, location of our camera, maybe bring it forward a little bit, and then you would just control P parent to the object, and you have your flashlight following your first person camera. However, what if we want kind of a springy secondary animation for that? Let's clear the parent. You simply select your child object, then select your parent object as you normally would, then right click, go to spring arm, and set active as parent. So your active object, the camera, is the second object that was selected. It's also this lighter orange color. So now spring arm has been activated, and right now it has rotation activated for delay. You can turn on and off different channels. I'll also add scale in here. That could be useful for some use cases. But basically, if it's turned on, then it, it'll have a delay. So right now location is turned off. So the spotlight will perfectly follow the location of the camera as if it was parented. So you can see that it only has a delay for the rotation. And then we have stiffness and damping. Stiffness is how quickly things catch up. So if I turn this all the way down, you can see it's just crawling, trying to catch up there. So if I set it to like one, then it's catching up a little bit faster. By default, it's at five. You could just hit backspace to set any value back to default and five works pretty good. Then damping is a little bit different. If you notice, there's a lot of like bouncing or oscillation and the secondary object never comes to rest, then you would turn up damping and that will fix that. So if I turn this way down, um, it's just a little bouncier. In this case, it's not bad, it's working just fine. Um, but in some cases, it just continues to oscillate and never resolves. So damping of 0.5 is pretty good most of the time. Um, and then as you can see here, this is a live preview. So this works even if your timeline is not playing. If I were to rotate my camera, you could see the spotlight just slowly catches up. However, this can be a little bit jumpy sometimes, especially if we're in the first person view, as you can see here, um, things are a little bit jumpy. So how do we get rid of this jitteriness? Well, we can simply bake this to the keyframes. So select your parent object and bake spring arm. Now this will work if your parent object has animation, which in this case it does. You can see as I play through here, the camera's walking around the scene. So simply just click bake spring arm and it'll let you know 704 frames were baked. And if we look in first person, you can see there's no more weird jitteriness, nothing like that. Let me give you another example. Let's say we have a basket. So let me just quickly create a basket here. This could be like a basket on a bike maybe. And there are objects within the basket. So let's add, let's just add a cube for now. Maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. And that is our giant basket. Let's shrink this down. Okay. So the basket's kind of bouncing up and down and the object needs to follow its motion. So first let's get some bounciness to this. Let's go to the graph editor. Let's insert a keyframe. Uh, we really only needed to do it to the Z location. So let's delete all of these other ones. We're just going up and down. Let's come over here to modifiers and add a noise modifier. That's a lot of bounciness. So let's increase the scale maybe to 25, maybe 10 and the strength. Oh, let's do 0.5. Gosh, I just want to tweak this forever. Let's do five and 0.5. Final answer. Okay. So if we just parented this to this with the control P parent menu, the object is very clearly glued to the basket and that doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's Alt P clear parent. And instead let's use our add on. Let's shift select the parent, right click spring arm, set active as parent, go up here to the item tab. And if we come down, we can just do, we just really need location. We don't need rotate rotation or scale. And let's preview this. 
Then of course, we can select the parent object, bake spring arm, and now if we play back, things will be nice and snappy. And yes, it's clipping through the bottom there. Um, this isn't perfect, but this does look a heck of a lot more interesting than it did uh, just before. If we wanted to add another level of complexity to complexity to this. Let's delete the keyframes in the child object. And in addition here, let's open up the, the item tab. Let's look at our transforms. Let's set a rotation keyframe at frame one. And I think we could do Z rotation. Let's add another noise modifier. There you go. And let's try a value of, let's do 10 this time and a strength of 0.8. So now that's kind of Jiggling around there, let's go back to frame one, shift select, right click, spring arm, set active as parent. And this time let's include rotation as well. Now that's gonna kind of bounce around and follow along with the rotation as well. You get the idea, you might know where I'm going with this. Let's do some, let's do some Y rotation. So let's, let's add another modifier, noise, and let's do similar values. Maybe we'll do a scale of eight and a strength of 0.5, maybe not. Not quite as much. Now we're really bouncing around. Let's go back to frame one. Let's come down here and bake spring arm. And there you go. Now it's really bouncing around. This is just gonna give so much more visual interest than your default parent relations or trying to keyframe this by hand would be a nightmare. Um, so there you go. Let's move on to another example. All right, here's another fun kind of example. Let's say I have this arm and it's just swinging back and forth. By the way, if you're unsure how to make this repeat forever, um, all you have to do is select, I only have three keyframes. I start here, go to the other side, and I come back to where I was. Just select all of these, hit Shift E, and you can make cyclic. I'll just clear the cyclic so I can show you how I did that. That's in the graph editor. Again, Shift E, make cyclic, and it will continue forever. Um, so yeah, let's say I have this little pendulum swinging and I want this ball to swing as if it's attached to the end here. All I would do is simply select this, select my parent, right click, spring arm, set active as parent, and there you go. By default, the settings work pretty good. Again, this is a live preview, so it could be a little bit buggy. Um, the spring arm settings are under the item tab. So I don't have a separate tab for this add-on just because look how many tabs we have. It gets it's too crowded because everyone creates a new tab for their add-on. So it's just in the, the item tab, spring arm. You can see that follows it pretty closely behind as if there's an invisible rubber band. And the higher you make the stiffness value, the more tight um, or elastic that rubber band will be. It's a little bit slow on playback. So let's bake the spring arm animation. And there you go, we have this cool little pendulum swinging, and I think that's pretty awesome. You could even attach a curve at either end here. If you didn't want this little string to be invisible, you can add a chain or a rope or whatever you want there. Um, but yeah, this is very useful. All right, I just added scale functionality. So let's do a little snowman animation here. This could be a cute little Christmas animation if you want. Let's have a big snowball on the bottom, smaller, for the midsection and a little head here. I'm just gonna apply scale to be safe. Now let's create a little animation. We should just have to animate the bottom one. Let's insert a keyframe at frame one. Let's go to frame 10, scale it up maybe, oh, two times is too big. Let's just scale it up to about there. Insert a keyframe, then let's copy the first keyframe and paste it at frame 20. There you go, we have that little animation. Uh, we don't need anything but scale. So let's get rid of location, rotation, select all these, just hit X to delete those. Now we have scale, let's select these, hit Shift E, make cyclic. So it just animates over and over again. I'm also gonna make sure I'm scaling my pivot point on individual centers. And I'm gonna scale on X just to make the ease in and ease out a little bit stronger. There you go. You can see kind of what I'm talking about there. So let's go back to frame one, select our first one, shift select our parent, right click, spring arm, set active as parent, and we only want the scale there. So now if we play this through, you could see sure enough, there's kind of a delayed scaling effect. 
that's gonna look really nice when we bake it out. So let's go ahead and select our last one. Then let's stack this effect a few layers deep. So shift select the middle one, right click, spring arm, uh, set active as parent. And again, we only want scale there. So that should be good. Let's go to the base level. Let's bake spring arm. Let's select the middle one. Let's bake spring arm there as well. And we're good to go. So now if we play through this, there you go. That's a fun little animation. And it shows you how you can use scale with spring arm and you can stack things a few layers deep. Um, so you have this cool snowman animation. Go pick this up on this post. There will be a zip folder that you can go download, install it like you would any other extension. Um, and then I have really big updates coming, a really big project I've been working on, not quite ready to launch yet, um, but I've been reworking my offworlddepot.com website. And anyone that is subscribed to me here on Patreon as a supporter at the time of launch for that site, will be getting free access to that site as a thank you for supporting me here. So look out for that access and I'll see you in the next video.